September 17th Common Council meeting. Will the clerk read the quote of the day? Oh, that would be nice. How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Thank you. Will you call the roll, please? Fourteen present. A quorum is qu present. Uh, Alderman Wangeman and Lewandowski are excused. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance with Alderman Donahue. Lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Alderman Hammond, approval of the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Back. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any changes or discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Fourteen ayes. <coughs> Motion carries. Confirmation of the mayor's appointments. This was submitted at the last council meeting. I hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation to the Business Improvement District. David Gass, Tom Brickley, Mike Vandersteen, David Hanneman, David Sanderson, Caitlin Bratz, Mike Miller, Eileen Simons, William Holbrook, Larry Schaefer, and Chad Pelichek. <coughs> All terms beginning 9-4-12 and expiring 9-30. 13 for the first five and 9 30 14 for the last six that I mentioned. Signed by the mayor. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A motion to confirm. Second. It's been moved and seconded to confirm the appointments. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Public forum tonight. We have one sole person, and that would be Jim Amodio. <clears throat> Mr. Modio, can we have your home address, please? 23 South Hiawatha Circle, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. At the last meeting we had uh, two weeks ago, there were some comments that were made <clears throat> in regards to ambulance uh, collections, and uh, I just want to set the record straight. Um, the statement was made that uh, ambulance net revenues collected year to date through July were 41%. In actuality, through August, they are 73%, and for the entire year in 2011, they were 77%. That's in a book that um, is published as well, and uh, I have a copy in my office, so you can subscribe to it. It's called Wisconsin Taxpayers Alliance, and they publish a lot of data about mun municipalities in different sizes. We fall into the large, which is populations of between 30 and 150,000. There are 23 municipalities in that group. Uh, one of the comments was made that uh, some of the cities have lower cost per capita than Sheboygan does. And in fact, based on 2010 data, Sheboygan has the seventh lowest cost per capita of the 23 cities between 30 and 150,000 in population during 2010. When you include ambulance revenues and other revenues that the fire department takes in, the net revenue or the net per capita cost is the second lowest in that group of 23 municipalities. There was reference made also to cities of Beloit, Fond du Lac, um, La Crosse, uh, Wauwatosa, Wausau. Each one of these cities mentioned, except for one, has a higher cost per capita, gross and net, than the city of Sheboygan does. The other statement that was made was uh, about fire stations and the number of fire stations. And the cities I just mentioned have fewer than five fire stations. The real issue is, is they have more firefighters and less stations, or else their cost per capita would not be greater than ours. We have five stations spread out 
uh, a, a very thin line to cover the city. Um, in closing a fire station, uh, there's not a, a big savings. We've talked about this many times. It's between twenty-five dollars and $50,000, the cost of the utilities to run the fire station. The real issue we have is in the number of firefighters if we chose to include the firefighters that live in those stations. According to the National Fire Protection Agency, um, <clears throat> their standard is no less than 15 firefighters have to be present at a fire to fight a fire in the interior of that dwelling. We're currently at the minimum staffing. We staff 24-7. We're at 15 firefighters. And it says that if we close the station and reduced the number of firefighters, we would actually have to call in people to do that and not have them sitting in stations. We have roughly on the average of three, three people per station per shift with five firefighters. When we first started the ambulance service, the revenue that we generated in the first year, which was 2008, was 737000 Our projection for 2012 is $1.1 million, significant growth uh, in just four years. And the expected contribution, uh, based on discussions with Chief Herman, uh, is about $550,000 to the general fund this year. So a significant contribution that we otherwise wouldn't have uh, if we had the did not have the ambulance service. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. <coughs> that would be it. All right. Under Mayor's announcements, I have a few things tonight. Um, first of all, we would ask and remind everybody we'll have a joint meeting on Wednesday at 6 o'clock at Blue Harbor with the county. We'll be giving an update on the joint uh, dispatch and where we're at both city and county at that point if you could um, attend it would be appreciated it is open to the public we'll start at six o'clock at Blue Harbor uh, second of all I'd like to uh, personally thank the management of, of Piggly Wiggly uh, for and the unions uh, both from Piggly Wiggly for announcing that they are going to be staying in Sheboygan uh, it's it's great that their home is here in Sheboygan and that keeping this store and and moving forward um, be between all three members, the uh, labor, the employees, the owners, um, and the property owners to be able to, over the last month to sit down and work things out is, I think, uh, great for our city to continue. Third thing, uh, I'd like to mention that Miesfeld's Lakeshore weekend uh, was a big success and I saw um, some of them in the last week, and they were able to give $106,000 and, and $500 and to Children's Hospital uh, because of their successful weekend. So uh, again, thank you for, for their input. Uh, last, I saw Alderman Lewandowski today. Um, he sends his wishes to all of you, and thank you for the people that have contacted him. He's doing fine, um, and he's looking forward to coming back and joining us. He might be watching us tonight. He got a new laptop, and if he is, uh, Scott, we wish you all well, and uh, hurry back. So that, that'll be it for tonight. We now have the elections of the Board of Water Commissioners. Alderman Hammond. Mayor, I move that we open the floor for nominations to the Board of Water Commissioners. Second. It's been Moved and seconded to open the floor for nominations of the Board of Water Commissioners. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, like to place in the nomination uh, Mr. Mark Hintz. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we place in nominations Mark Hintz. Is there any further nominations? Is there any further nominations? Is there any further nominations? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we direct the city clerk to cast the unanimous ballot for Mark Hintz. As, a, as the new member of the Board of Water Commissioners. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to close the balloting and cast a unanimous, vote, a unanimous ballot in favor of Mark Hintz for a new member of the Board of Water Commissioners. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> We now have a public hearing to amend the Sheboygan official zoning map to change the use district classification from U urban residential to suburban commercial. Anybody here for the hearing? 
Anybody want to speak on the hearing? Anybody want to speak on the hearing? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motion to close the hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the hearing. Clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> 14 ayes. Motion carried. To the consent agenda. 131 through 318, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to accept and file ROOs, accept and adopt RLCs, and put all resolutions upon their passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass and accept our, all RCs, accept all committee reports, and pass all resolutions. Under discussion, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to be able to pull uh, 315 for a separate vote, please. 315, did you say? Correct. We will act on 315 first from law and licensing recommending granting various licenses. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Hang on. And we're moving to accept and adopt. Alderman Versi. Thirteen eyes on one abstention. Motion carries. We'll go back to three one through three eighteen. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. I'll get back there. Fourteen eyes. Motion carried. 4-1, a communication from all of the board submitting articles from the Milwaukee Journal will be referred to finance and strategic planning. 5-1 through 5-5 five five will be referred. 6-1, a resolution from Alderman Hammond executing a quick claim deed on the property 705 Riverfront Drive will be referred to finance. 6-2, a resolution from Alderman Vandewilly authorizing city attorney to engage in special outside counsel for representing law and licensing committee. Alderman Vandewilly. Mr. Mayor, I move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Discussion for a suspension of rules. Hearing none, we'll vote then on suspending the rules. Oops. 12 ayes, two noes. Motion carries. Alderman Van Dooley on the resolution then. Um, it's a resolution for the uh, law licensing to go ahead with a quasi judicial hearing, and we need the outside counsel to, um, we need it kind of right away, I guess. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution to hire the outside counsel. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not going to support this uh, motion. Uh, I went to the Law and Licensing Committee meeting, and at that meeting, the clerk that made the violation as far as selling the underage cigarettes received a warning. That's all she received was a warning. But yet the committee thought it was more important to bring the business owner back in and try to take his license away for 10 days. A warning versus 10 days of, of not being able to sell a, pro a product in the store. I don't believe that the punishment justifies the crime. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, can somebody tell me whether Mr. Jans down there was actually charged with anything himself, his business, or was this just an employee that got a warning? Alderman Vanderwood. Um, just a minute. He did not, I believe he was not charged. I'm sorry? I believe he was not charged. But Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Under the circumstances then, if the owner of the business was not actually charged with anything, then I don't see any purpose of going ahead with a quasi-judicial hearing. Uh, and if he would have been, if he would have been charged and given a ticket, 
then I don't think it would be appropriate to have a quasi-judicial hearing until the gentleman had his day in court if he was convicted of anything. So I think we're, we're kind of putting the cart before the horse in one way and then in the other way that he hasn't been charged with anything and his employee was warned. So I'm not going to support this. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not going to support this either. I sit on this committee and I think there's more um, people were upset with the conduct of the business owner than the selling of the cigarettes and the clerk only did get a warning. But I have a question for our, our attorney. On all the issues, or the majority of the issues that are brought forth to um, lawn licensing, have these people had their day in court before we've passed judgment on them? Uh, there's two tracks on these things. Uh, there's a criminal track, if you will, or ordinance track where you, uh, they're charged with the violation of something. And there's a licensing track, uh, and that's what law and licensing looks at is uh, violations at the establishment uh, uh, and whether or not that will impact uh, an individual's or a business's license. Uh, it wasn't at the meeting, but uh, apparently this has been discussed at two different uh, law and licensing committee meetings, and the recommendation from the committee was uh, to request a, voluntarily, a voluntary surrender of his license for a period of time, and absent that, to uh, conduct a hearing uh, to suspend or revoke his license. Um, that's the prerogative of the Salary and Grievance Committee uh, to make that recommendation to the council, and it's the council's decision then to decide whether or not to proceed with that. Thank you. Hope that answers your question, Alderman. Any other questions, Alderman Lissart? No, thank you. Okay. Alderman Matichek. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was his fourth time within two years, uh, different staff violating the law. This clearly shows that he is not training the staff properly, and I don't exactly like the idea of the chance of him having employees, having them take the fall, firing them, replacing them. How many times can his organization violate the law and not receive any, any consequence? He's only received warnings, up in, three warnings, three warnings in two years it's for the same thing over and over. I, I don't see where you're going to draw the line of five, six, seven, eight, how many warnings? That's all. Thank you. Alamin Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. So then uh, you're telling me that anybody that had three warnings previously should be having their license pulled because <laughs> there were a number of other uh, establishments within the city that, that uh, had more warnings than what uh, uh, that uh, organization had. And, and again, I, I go out of my way to try to support everything that law and licensing does having been a member of that committee. And I understand the importance of the job that you do. But pulling a license for 10 days in that, bu in that business, in that area, I, I, just, I, just, I just quite honest, I can't understand why he has to uh, suffer that type of uh, um, uh, financial loss because his clerk got a warning and he got nothing. <clears throat> Alderman Donahue. Uh, I just have a, a point of uh, information. Um, is the hearing being requested because Mr. Yance has appealed the decision, or is there a hearing just done as a matter of course when there is a proposed suspension? City Attorney? Uh, the latter, uh, Alderman Donahue. Um, the hearing is conducted as a matter of course give uh, due process rights prior to uh, suspending a, a license. Uh, the general procedure is to offer to the licensee uh, to allow them to voluntarily surrender their license for a given period of time uh, to avoid going through the process of quasi-judicial hearing, but uh, uh, it's the process anytime the council uh, looks at uh, terminating or uh, suspending someone's license. Well, let me down here. And then my follow-up question would be if, um, if this hearing is held and there's not independent counsel uh, for the city, what would happen under those circumstances? Uh, well, the purpose of independent counsel is, is uh, to provide 
uh, again, due process to the, uh, to the license holder. Uh, our office would actually act as prosecutor to present the case before the council and independent counsel would represent the council in providing advice, legal advice to the council should it request it in uh, dealing with the evidence that's presented. So essentially the, the hearing officer, the outside counsel acts as the hearing officer or the equivalent of a judge. So how would you go ahead with a, with a hearing if there is no judge? Would you just not go through with the hearing or how, what, if in fact this resolution is not passed, what's the practical consequence? Um, I guess we'd have to look at, see if there's any other mechanism, and I'm not coming up with any off the top of my head as far as being able to conduct a quasi-judicial hearing where there's a separation between the prosecutorial function in our office and, and the advice of the counsel, basically, to act as judge and, and uh, prosecutor in the same hearing. So that's, that's the dilemma. <coughs> without, uh, the other option is uh, if you did not hire outside counsel to represent the city council, uh, then the council would not have legal representation in its deliberations on, uh, on uh, the evidence that's presented. So the, the council acts as judge, but uh, the legal advice would be provided to the city council provided some advice as to its parameters in, uh, in deciding whether or not to suspend or terminate. Thank you. Alderman Matichek. Thank you. Uh, in regards to upholding the, making decision about <coughs> holding the firm line on he violated the law and there should be consequences, um, now, instead of retroactive going back and saying, okay, two years ago, a different organization failed to uphold the law, so now that we should punish them now just doesn't hold any water with me. It would be the same thing with when we raise taxes. Do we go back and say, okay, pay back three years' taxes to everyone else that lived in the city? Uh, to me, right now, and be, before my day, I, I, I heard that Sheboygan had the title of Sin City of Wisconsin. Ugh. Now, to me, we need to hold the line somewhere, and while I'm on the council, I'm not going to uh, help any way in, in any form of the city returning back to Sin City and just allowing people to violate the law and sit there and just give them warning after warning. Any other discussion? And the motion is to pass the resolution to engage in an outside legal counsel for the process of the hearing. Clerk will call the roll. Five ayes, nine noes. The motion fails. Six three, resolution from Alderman Hammond transferring appropriations will be referred to finance. 6-4, resolution from Alderman Vanderwee authorizing a engage in special services for outside legal and common counsel regarding judicial suspension of alcohol beverage license 2720. Alderman Vanderwee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the, uh, or I move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Discussion on suspending the rules? Hearing none, we'll vote on suspending the rules. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Van de Wheely on the resolution. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. passage. It's been moved in. Second. Seconded to have the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This one I'm, I'm going to support, and that is because this has been a prob problem establishment. Uh, this establishment used to be in my district. It no longer is. Now it's in District 4. But this has been a problem uh, uh, establishment. There's been lack of cooperation from the, uh, from the license holder. And in this case, I'll definitely support this one. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Alderman... 
Donahue. Here's the problem I have with us picking and choosing what due process we're going to offer people whose licenses are going to be suspended or revoked for a period of time. We can't sit as a body and determine without hearing any evidence that this claim may have merit and another claim may not. Based on Attorney McLean's uh, statement that this is part of the due process that we offer people before we take their living away from them, it's really important, in my opinion, that we continue to have basic standards of fairness so that you have a hearing officer who can preside over the hearing, make sure that both sides have an opportunity to fairly present their case, and to provide any necessary guidance to the council as it acts as uh, the decider, if you will. So I really would caution us in the future not to be picking and choosing who gets due process and who doesn't. We have a standard. The questions that I had were answered sufficiently. And it is an expense. I would assume it's a relatively minor expense. But it's something that we really need to, to provide our citizens and, and, and just so that we don't appear to be an arbitrary and capricious body. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess um, because I don't have a propensity to visit the rehab bar and grill, what was the offense that uh, precipitated um, us having a quasi-judicial hearing? Uh, they've had quite a few violations in the past year. Any other questions? Any other questions? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Eyes. Motion carries. 6 5 a resolution by Holman Raisler, <coughs> Van Akron, Koth, and Vanderwilly approving the paid time off policies and procedure for city employees. Holman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to suspend the rules, please. Second. So we move and seconded to suspend the rules. Discussion on suspension of the rules. Hearing none, we'll vote on suspending the rules. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, again. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for kind of transparency for everybody else that's not us, kind of let the, everyone know what this is about, real brief. It's a good thing, but if you can just let everybody else in TV land and audience know what it's about. Sure, it's, uh, it's uh, approving the, uh, the paid time off, um, formerly the sick time, um, for one employee to give to another employee uh, in hardship cases. And there's laid out a whole procedure and a form that has to be filled out um, by both employees. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 6-6, six, six, a resolution from Alderman Heidemann authorizing a contract for ACOM Technical Services for Eisner Avenue right away plot. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote on suspending the rules. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Heidemann. Uh, anybody that's been over on Eisner Avenue on the north side of Sheboygan knows you want to keep this project moving along, and that's why we need to get this passed. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 6 7, a resolution from Alderman Heidemann will be referred to Public Works. 7-1, report of committees, report of committee from law and licensing denying license application for taxi operator license number 9645, Alderman Vandewilly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vandewilly. Is Rachel Sazon in here tonight? She's not here. Um, she had an extremely lengthy record and did not, uh, we invited her twice to our meeting and she did not appear or give us a phone call. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the committee report? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 
7-2, an RC from Milan licensing the nine license application for tax, taxi operator license number 9649. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Then move and second that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is, Under Nancy, discussion. Oops, is Nancy Valentine here? She's not here. Um, she was invited to the committee twice and did not appear either time. <coughs> Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 7-3 in RC from Lawn Licensing denying the license application for a taxi operator license 9654. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderbilt. Is Scott Ramon Guinness here? He's not here. Um, he also did not appear uh, before the committee both times we called them in. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 7-4, committee report from law and licensing denying the license application for taxi operator license number 9660. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderbilt. Is Charlene Johnson here this evening? She is here. Um, she did not appear the two times we invited her, so I would ask that we um, send this back to law and licensing. It's been moved Second. and seconded to send her <laughs> license back to law and licensing. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, send the license back to law and licensing. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 7 5 from law and licensing denying the license application for beverage operator license number 9661. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderbilt. Is Haley Shelk here this evening? She is not here. Um, she also did not appear to either meeting, meeting that we invited her to. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 7-6 from re committee report from law and licensing denying license application for taxi operator license number 7670. Alderman Vanderwood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwood. Is Stephen Wagner here this evening? He is not here. Um, he did come before our committee, and um, the committee voted three to two to deny his license. He had a um, quite a few disorderly conducts that involved stalking, that sort of thing. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 7-7, seven, seven, report of committee from strategic fiscal planning recommending RO number 631213 from Alderman Bellinger, question whether the cities Sheboygan continue to provide garbage collection service. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, if you will, I'd also like to bring 7-8 with that. Um, they're basically the same document, just referred to two other committees, and I'd like to move that they be forwarded to Public Works. Second. It's been moved and seconded to forward both of these, or this document, to Public Works. It's the same document. The communication, I'm sorry. To Public Works. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Seven eight. We'll vote on two so we get it on the computer. Thirteen eyes, one no. Thank you. 
7-9, strategic planning, referring to uh, RO 123.12 from the mayor will be referred to finance. Ordinances 8-1 through 8-6. 8-1 will be referred to the City Plan Commission. 8-2 uh, will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 8-3 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 8-4 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 8-5 will be referred to Public Protection. Public Protection and Safety is going to be busy. 8-5 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 8-6 will be sent to Law and Licensing. 8-7, the Ordinance 612-13 from Alderman Raisler, Kath Van Wille, Van Akron repealing, reacting in Section 82-126 of the Municipal Code relating to compensation for overtime work by non-representative employees. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to uh, refer it back to salaries and grievance to clean up the uh, language at the end regarding the starting period for this. Second. I'd move and second to refer it back to yes. salary and grievance. Is there any discussion on the referral? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Fourteen. Motion carried. Eight eight ordinance by Alderman Raisler repealing section twenty nine one seventy two of the nineteen seventy five municipal code rel relative to unaccured leave. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to uh, suspend the rules, please. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Any discussion on suspending the rules? Hearing none, we'll vote on suspending the rules. Fourteen ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Raisler. Thank you. I'd move that the uh, ordinance be placed upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the ordinance be put upon its <laughs> passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Terry, Terry. I'm sorry. I just turned you off. <laughs> um, if, it, if somebody could just maybe briefly explain um, what um, with the code relative to unaccrued leave, what we are actually passing, that'd be great. City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, what this ordinance did related to the, uh, the policy that was adopted by the council previously regarding uh, paid time off and use of that to share with uh, others. Uh, that in effect takes, takes the place of the old uh, 1975 ordinance on unaccrued leave. It references sick leave <coughs> and how it can be shared and we don't have sick leave anymore. It's PTO. Well, the housekeeping thing then? Excuse me? Housekeeping then? Yeah, since you passed the policy on dealing with the uh, sharing of okay. paid time off, that really covers it. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Fourteen ayes. Motion carried. Eight nine, an ordinance by Alderman Van Akron will go to public <coughs> protection and safety. Eight ten will go to public protection and safety. Matters laid over. RO 126.13.12 by City Plan Commission amending the city, zo city of Sheboygan's official zoning map for Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the youth district classification to locate a parcel located number 215096. Alderman Raisler. No, Alderman Koth. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RO be accepted and placed on file, and the ordinance be passed. passed. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Other matters, Steve. Yes, I just said Steve. 10-2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. <coughs> we'll send to law and license, please? Yes. That will be sent to law and license. 10-1, Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851G, Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which it is involved, namely American Family Insurance versus the city of Sheboygan case number 2011-CV873. Second. So moved, second to convene in closed session. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Motion carries. We will go into closed session. Um, and we won't be coming back out.